a couple of reflections. Uh, first of all, how many of you are going to be are in your 20s right now? Raise your hand. Yeah, you're the only ones that are going to be around in 2050. So the rest of us, don't worry about it. Huh? Um, how about having a 50% across the board reduction? 50% less ships, 50% increase in premiums, 50% in depth in the ports, 50% in consumption, 50% in a slowdown of internet speed. Maybe that's the fix. Um, I agree with uh, Orestes that uh, we, are, uh, we are a bit of, uh, uh, what did he call it? Uh, I, I, I want to say that we were astigmatic and we have a little bit of Alzheimer's also, besides what he mentioned. Um, we are going so fast in some segments, we're talking about autonomous ships and we're forgetting about crew competence. And, uh, I'm going to talk to you about going back in history a little bit and the fact that we, we love safety and safety culture has been around for a long time, that we forget about judgment and poor judgment. And you might be the safest company in the world, you might be the safest operator in the world, but if you have poor judgment, you're going to have people like the captain of the Titanic and the captain of the Exxon Valdez and the captain of the Costa Concordia from top nations in the world, top training, make judgment errors and create havoc. So we need to think about those things as well. Orestes mentioned, let's look ourselves in the mirror. We're not as good as we think. We absolutely live in a bubble. I see it every time we respond to a, to a ship salvage incident. We continue to li live in a bubble even in the middle of the incident. So we need to be more proactive and not reactive. And I, everything I heard today, which is totally new for me, was reactive. We're still doing that. Huh? Uh, so it's great that uh, I think Apostolos is trying to make us look further ahead. I love this slide. I show it every time. I'm like the good math teacher. I, I give you the same soup every time. And it's safety and what we do day to day, and what we do, I think, even when we talk about LNG and retrofits, is perception of risk. And we all look at risk different. So, if you have a good program, if you think you have a good safety program in place and you're compliant, I hope you have a good culture of perception of risk on board. And it needs to be across the board, from the master to the chief engineer to the CEO and the MD needs to be across the board. Otherwise, you're going to end up in what I call compliance-induced complacency, and you think you're safe, but you're not. And then, when you have an incident, you won't have the ability to react to the incident when safety fails, because safety does fail, even with the best loss prevention programs. You, there'll be an incident where safety has failed. And the question is, do you have the ability to get up and continue operations? When you fall off the bike, do you stay on the ground? Are you resilient enough to get up, or do you have to wait for mom to come get you and pick you up? Are you an egg as a company, or are you a tennis ball? Do you have the ability to bounce, react, and continue operations? Maybe. If you have a couple of vessels, it's easier than when you have 60 vessels. So keep that in mind as you implement safety procedures. You must be able to recover. Safety is an incomplete cycle if you don't have the ability to recover and continue operations. That's that term resiliency we've heard that the IT industry is very good at. I'm sure Cynthia will talk to us about that later when we talk about cyber risks and other issues like that, we're not very good at it as a shipping industry. That's why we're in business. So my takeaway for you is implement some of these things. They look simple, they look common sense. You might sit there, yeah, that's common sense. To me, the most important is the fourth one, stakeholder education. Do we do enough of that? Do we do enough of that with people like 
the Havari Commando here in Germany? Do we do enough of that with the consumers, with the port operators, or do we just stay inside our little shell and think that everybody knows what we do? The fact is, very little people know what we do. And I, I live in Texas. We have a lot of ships there, in and out. I guarantee you that 75% of the Texas population has no clue what an oil tanker does. Maybe here in Hamburg, because you see them every day, and you use ferries to go back and forth across to the other side. But we need to do more of that. And I think, to me, recovery is key to having a sound safety policy as a company. Resiliency, make sure you have a framework to, to do that, or are you just there to make banks, regulators, vettings, make them happy? That's it, simple. Nine minutes? Yes, yes perfect. Thank you very much.